Hi everyone, I am the Tax Pro, and today we're going to talk about inventory and WAVE. So, WAVE does not actually track inventory. Other accounting systems do, um, but that's not necessarily an issue for a lot of businesses. You don't necessarily have to have an accounting system that tracks your inventory. I'm going to show you a workaround. So a lot of people like WAVE because it's free, right? It has a free option and it can be a lot more cost efficient for small businesses if they're using WAVE. Um, downside is it does not have the ability to track inventory. So as far as systems like QuickBooks Online, you can go in and you can say, I purchased, you know, 10 of this particular item from this vendor. I paid $5 each. My total bill was $50. And then QuickBooks will tell you, okay, you currently have 10 of this particular item on hand. If you sell two, QuickBooks will say, okay, you have eight on hand. Wave can't do that. However, if you are selling physical product, it is very possible that you already have a system that is tracking your inventory for you on an item level. For example, if you have a Shopify store, Shopify will track your inventory for you. Same with Square. Square can track your inventory for you. So you may not necessarily need to have Wave track it. I see a lot of people that come to us that have this misconception that those numbers have to live in your accounting system, even if you have a separate system that tracks it for you. I disagree with that very strongly. So for example, if I have a system that can track inventory numbers, but the client is using Shopify or Square, and the inventory lives in Shopify or Square, I will not duplicate that inventory system in their accounting system because there's really no need for it. And even if you can connect Shopify or Square or whatever inventory system with their accounting system, there's probably gonna be a glitch at some point in time. And then the inventory systems won't match and it's just a pain, okay? So if you have an inventory system, even if you have an accounting system that can track the inventory numbers, I'll tell you to pick one or the other and have your inventory live in that system, okay? So it's not necessarily a bad thing if WAVE is not tracking inventory, okay? For a lot of small businesses in the U.S., you actually don't have to track inventory for tax purposes. As long as you qualify under the small business exception, you do not have to track inventory for tax purposes. Now you may need to for other requirements, I'm not saying that you're not required at all, but for tax purposes, in order to comply with the Internal Revenue Code, many small businesses are not required to track inventory. So this may be a mute point anyways, okay? <laughs> um, I'm going to show you how WAVE normally handles this, and then I'm going to show you the workaround if you want to have inventory on your balance sheet, okay? So if we have WAVE, let's say that we are going to go in and we are going to add a product or service that we are using and we are buying and selling. So let's say that I have a landscaping company and we sell these really cool herb kits that you can grow in your, in your house, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy these kits and then we're gonna sell them. So I'm gonna name the product. I went in here to purchases and, and then clicked products and services. I guess I should have explained that first. Um, you can also navigate to products and services from the sales and payments area. Um, so I'm going to name the product. You can put a description if you want. I'm not going to. I'm going to sell these suckers for $125. I'm going to sell this and I'm going to buy this. When you mark that you're selling it and you're buying it, when you mark that you sell it, it wants to know the income account. I'm just going to put sales. When you buy it, it wants to know what expense account. It is only going to allow you to pick an expense account. Traditionally in accounting, when you purchase inventory, it needs to go into an asset account for inventory, okay? Wave won't let you do that from this particular screen. 
So the way that Wave has you do it is you're gonna pick an expense account where you want that item expensed, okay? Now, if I go into purchases, into bills, let's say that I'm gonna purchase 10 of these kits, okay? I'm gonna create a bill, I'm gonna pick a vendor. I'm gonna pick the item herb kit. Now notice the price that comes up is gonna be the price that I entered. That price is gonna show up on the bills and the invoices, okay? Obviously, we're not gonna sell the item for the same price that we purchased it at. You're gonna to have to adjust one or the other. So let's say that we buy these for $50. I'm gonna purchase 10 of them for $50 each. That's a total of 500. I'm going to save this. Now, obviously, you may want to put bill numbers and all that good stuff in. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to ignore those details for now. So I have now purchased these particular herb kits, okay? Let me show you where they live now. These are going to live in this purchases resale items. This is my profit and loss and it's gonna live in here, okay? You'll see right here, I purchased herb kits, $500. It's immediately expensed in a cost of goods sold account. In traditional accounting, you don't immediately expense that purchase. You expense the cost of that kit when you sell it, okay? Wave does not follow that traditional standard. So can we force Wave to follow that standard? Yes, absolutely we can. Um, so we need to pick a couple different options. We can do a perpetual inventory system in WAVE, or we can do a periodic. Let me explain the difference between those two. Perpetual inventory systems mean that every time you make a sale, you are updating your inventory. Okay? Every time you make a sale, you are updating your inventory. Periodic means that you select a periodic, like a, a time period and every you know, month or every week, you update that inventory value, okay? For small businesses, to me, it makes the most sense to do periodic and I do a monthly adjustment for the most part. I'm gonna show you both ways. I'll do periodic first because that makes the most sense to me and then I'll show you perpetual, okay? So let's say that um, I've chosen a periodic time period for, um, or a periodic inventory system, and I am gonna choose a monthly time period for adjusting my inventory. Let's say that I am using Square to keep track of my inventory, okay? When I come into Wave, Every time I purchase inventory, I am going to put that purchase into my inventory account. So first let's go over making an inventory account. In accounting, you're gonna to go to chart of accounts and you're just gonna make yourself an inventory account. So you're gonna add a new account, select type, it's gonna be under assets. You're gonna select inventory and then account name, you can type inventory I'm not going to save this because I already have an inventory account in here. Um, but that's how you create an inventory account. Super easy. It's under assets. Every time I make a purchase, and this is going to go for periodic or perpetual. Every time you make a purchase, you're going to take it straight to that inventory account. So you're going to create a bill. You're going to go, and instead of choosing an item, you're going to choose inventory. Okay, so under expense category, you're going to select inventory, even though it's an asset. And then you're just going to put the total amount. Okay, $500. You can put, you know, purchase 10 herb kits. Oops. Herb kits at um, $50 a piece. If I could type. Okay, so you can make a note on what you purchased. You're going to put it into inventory though. What that does is currently your balance sheet doesn't have inventory. If we update this, 
you now have inventory on here, okay? So it's giving you the total amount that you've paid for the inventory. This is not the total value of the inventory that you have on hand, so it's not the total amount you can sell it for. It's the total amount you've paid for it, okay? So the total amount that you've paid for it is what lives in inventory. The total amount that you paid for it includes shipping. It includes, you know, taxes on it. Anything that you need to pay to get the inventory to your warehouse is included in inventory. Um, okay, so it's sitting in inventory. Now, if I'm going to do a periodic adjustment to inventory. So every month I am going to go into Square and I am going to say, how much inventory did I sell this, this month? You don't want to take the amount that you sold the products for. You want to take the amount that you sold the products or that you purchased the products that you've sold for. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. So if I'm purchased 10 of these herb kits, they each cost me $50, and I sell them for $125, okay? Every time I sell an herb kit, I'm going to take $50 from inventory, and I'm going to move it to cost of goods sold. I'm not going to take $125, I'm going to take $50, because I paid $50 for it, okay? This is where it gets a little bit tricky, You are going to create a new journal entry, okay? So every month, we are going to move amounts from inventory to cost of goods sold or to a cost of goods sold account. So this is recording cogs. Uh, let's just say it's for November, okay? So I'm going to take November's, I am going to go into cost of goods sold. So this purchases resale items, that's a cost of goods sold account. Uh, let's say I sell three of these. I paid 50 for each one, 50 times three is 150. And then I am going to take inventory and I'm going to credit inventory for that amount. So what I've done here is I have recorded my cost of goods sold account. I have debited it for $150. Debits increase cost of goods sold accounts. Okay, I don't want you to think debits automatically mean increases because it depends on the type of account. For cost of goods sold accounts and expense accounts, debits increase a particular account, okay? So I'm going to debit my cost of goods sold account for the total amount that I paid for the inventory I sold that month. And then I'm going to reduce my inventory by crediting my inventory by that 150, okay? I put the date as of 11.30 because I'm recording the cost of goods sold for November. So that's a journal entry. I went ahead and recorded cost of goods sold, okay? Now, if I go to reports, this does a couple different things. If I look at my profit and loss, and I go to details, it is going to have increased my purchases by that 150, okay? So it is increasing this cost of goods sold account. You see how it's under cost of goods sold? It is decreasing my cost of goods sold, or sorry, increasing my cost of goods sold account by 150, okay? It's saying I spent $150 on that particular set of products that I sold. It is then going to decrease my inventory account. So my inventory account, it was 500, now it's 350 because I decreased it by $150, okay? 
I also need to record the sale side, right? So I also need to record the revenue side. This is just moving the cost of the product from inventory to cost of goods sold, okay? You also need to record the revenue side, which you can either do that through sales and payments, like through invoices, or you could make a journal entry for all the sales from Square. I'm not going to show you how to do that side of it because I'm just going to assume that you're doing invoices through here. If you're not, then... Um, you can see how to record this, the actual sales side in a different video. Um, so that's how you would operate on a periodic system. On a perpetual system, you're going to do the same thing. Okay? You're just going to do that journal entry every time you have a sale. Okay, so it gets a little complicated. Um, I really recommend doing it on a periodic basis instead of a perpetual basis. Um, if you were to do it on a perpetual basis, I'll just kind of show you. You'd go to create a transaction. You need to do a journal entry. So let's say that you have a sale on the 8th, and then you would put recording cogs for, you know, sale maybe one, two, three. And then you would take your cost of goods sold account, which was this purchases resale. Let's say that they, you, you sold one. So it's $50 instead of the 150. And then you would reduce your inventory by 50. Okay. So that's what your journal entry would be for one, selling one item. If you're doing a perpetual system, you would need to do this every time you make a sale. If you are doing um, a periodic system, you would do it for a specific time period, like a month. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, please let me know. The idea here is that you're just summarizing your costs. You're just moving it from inventory to a cost of goods sold account. Realistically, Many small businesses don't even have to do this. They can just take those purchases straight to a cost of goods sold account. Um, that just doesn't provide you the same information in your profit and loss as a profit and loss where you are recording the actual cost of goods sold to the corresponding revenue. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.